All right, Eric Stromquist at Ibicon 214. Hey, if you are an integrator and you don't know who these guys are, you don't know who your competition is. This is Hep the Controls. I am here with the brothers. No, father, younger, son. Younger father, brother, son. Younger brother, younger brother, Ted, <laughs> older brother, Jason. Ball guys are always young. It's a sign of a virility, right? Actually, father-son combination. So tell us a little bit what you guys do. And you guys won a big award at the Niagara Summit. Talk about that, a bit about that if you would. So uh, what we do is integration. We're a strictly integrating company. Uh, I'll let my son talk about that one. Yeah. So the the project that we won with was the Bedrock Project down in Detroit, uh, 3.5 million square feet of integrated facility across 12 buildings. Uh, we integrated Legacy Siemens System, uh, Johns Controls, uh, Honeywell. Then we Otis Elevators, Schindler, Kone, Thyssen, uh, straight into electrical metering, um, lighting control. And I guess where it stands apart from other people is that they're, they're bringing all these systems onto a network, but they're not creating that single driver's seat. And that's, wow. And yeah, and that's, that's what we did. So the elevator interface is read-write capability directly from a Tritium platform. Um, we're using J2 as our, as our graphics GUI. And... Uh, well, you know, guys, look, I, I got to tell you, to win that award at the, the Niagara Summit is a huge, huge deal. So I, I want to shift gears real quick and, and say, let's talk about, because one of the themes of this conference is systems integrators changing. You know, I mean, to use a metaphor, the, the integrator of tomorrow, uh, today, is not your father's integrator, although in your case, <laughs> it seems like it is. Right. So, uh, so I mean, obviously, Ted, you've been in the business for, for a while. Jason, you're just getting in there, which is probably why you guys are so successful. But uh, how, have th how, have you seen, how have you seen things? things change, Ted, and Jason, where do you see things going? The way I see things changing is kind of how the security systems change from the analog to the digital world, and you started to see this change probably five, six years ago. Um, Jim Young is one of my mentors. I've been listening to him and listening to what he's been talking about, and I'm the person that wants to be that on the innovation side of the, the world. and. I always thought that you had to do both sides of integration if you're going to do it. So the first thing we did is we went out and figured out how to program and engineer multi-brands of equipment and multi-brands of building automation. We decided early on that we were going to have an IT department. And 25% of our staff are IT-based people. Uh, we also decided that if there's going to be a network in a building, it has to be a facility network that we don't want to be on the corporate network. There's too many limitations. We want to allow third-party vendors to come onto the system and be able to do their job without having to come to site. Those are some of the things that we did and it's worked for us. That's fantastic. Now, so Jason, from your perspective, is your background IT or how did you get into business? Um, and uh... Yeah, my background's IT uh, uh, with an electrical background and NHVAC. But what we really saw was two years ago at the 2012 Niagara Summit, was both Ted and I were there and we're listening to the noise they call it and it was a we said that the control market is going to turn into a commodity market you know a VAV box is going to be shipped out it's going to have the controller on it and your controls tech all he's going to do is now wire that bus so we said to ourselves how do we get out of that commodity market and get get into something that we can be sustainable at. And that's where we said, let's do strictly integrations. Let's do the top level. Let's get up there, we'll, we'll integrate the, the difficult stuff, the fire alarms, the elevators, and give that single driver's seat. Let's concentrate on that and leave the commodity to the... So, so how does, I mean, that's gotta be a lot of, I guess, trial and error, just rolling your sleeves up, figuring it out type stuff. I mean, it's not like yeah. there's a magic bullet for that, is there? No. Uh, the magic bullet? A yes. big boot. Magic, <laughs> magic bullets. Okay, so we got the two magic bullets here. Yeah. But uh, so that's pretty amazing. And that project you guys won the war on. That those are some pretty diverse, diverse systems. So sort of shifting gears. You mentioned security. You mentioned security too. You guys it sounds like you typically try to keep the BAS system off of the network. Is that is that one of your security preventive measures? We feel that the facility network has to be accessible by multi vendors. You don't want to get into the limitations, so the Bedrock Project is Quicken Loans. Quicken Loans is a banking industry. They have a lot of limitations. So when one of the first things that we did when we got to Detroit and started talking to them about their, their business is we exposed the risks they had of having 
building automation and building systems on their network. At that point, we talked them into putting a facility network. So all their buildings have fiber top to bottom. They all have switches on every floor. It makes a robust system and also allows us to do a lot of things in the building and allows our vendors to do a lot of things in the buildings. It, security was a secondary thing, but we were creating our own security. So we, were, we built our fa facility network to the Quicken Loans IT standards, not to our standards, to their standards. And that's a big difference. Uh, so we get audited to make sure that we're, we're meeting the standards and we feel that that's really important. Well, you know, one of the things we've heard at the conference, the Building Systems Integrator Conference is really, and from a lot of these owners, a lot of them really don't know what they want. And it seems like you've got to have somebody that's pulling everybody to the table, getting everybody aligned. Now, is that a function that you guys have typically performed? Um, yeah, when a project starts, uh, we have a kickoff meeting with the architect and engineering firm, um, and then it goes out to bid. So we review everything, and it goes out to bid. They select their controls contractor, and then uh, and all the other contractors, and then we facilitate another meeting. We call it the integration kickoff meeting, where we hand out. It's basically a form to all the lighting companies, um, metering, elevators. Uh, electrical meters and HVAC guys, and they have to tell us what's it, BACnet, OPC, Modbus, what they're using to to comply to the spec, and that's 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 how it complies in. Well, the one thing that <clears throat> Jason never mentioned is what we do for our customers: write a smart building specification to their requirements. That smart building specification actually bedrock is bounded in a book format and they give that to any contractor or any engineer that wants to or architect that's going to work in their their space so that created a, a standard for everybody and we improve on that standard all the time as we learn the industry and learn different things and hurdles one of the things that we're always looking for is that the vendor have an enterprise level product so we're not looking to buy a server in every building we're looking to to provide that we call it at Bedrock, it's called Big Papa. Big Papa, I love Big it. Papa. I love it, man. Exactly. Big Poppy in Boston, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so listen, uh, guys, you guys deal with a really good friend of ours, Scott Cochran, Cochran Supply. And, uh, you know, we really look up to Scott. What makes Scott such a good distributor in Cochran Supply? He's got a nice smile. I think I get more teeth than he does when you start buying from me then. But in all seriousness, because as, you know, as things are changing, we know integrators have changed. It seems yep. like you guys have picked it up, up to your game to meet the needs. And I think for our distributor listeners out there, what do we need to know to support guys like you? And, I, you know, I mean, we laugh and we joke about Scott, but he, to us, is one of the most innovative guys out there. He's definitely a... <clears throat> Scott's definitely a leader in the industry. Uh, the support we find from him is product knowledge, uh, definitely the vendor knowledge. We can always go to him to find a product or a software. Uh, definitely has extensive experience. Uh, when we're looking for a jar file or something to be had, he has the ability to give it. Um, good, good staff, good training staff, and everything else up there too. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And and I think with uh, the way our integrations happen, with our nose to the ground, we have to be able to move. Yeah. And Scott's staff can move that quickly for us. So. Okay, cool. All right, last question. Um, Intel coming into the marketplace. What are your guys' impressions? <laughs> Smoking <and> mirrors. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you are smoke and mirrors. <laughs> All right, that's little poppy over there. What's big poppy have to say? Intel coming into the marketplace. What do you think? If the product does what they says, what they say it does, which everybody's going to have to figure that out on their own. What it's going to do for the, it, it's amazing that the big players in the industry are trying to get into the industry. I think that down the road, all it does is create more confidence in the industry that there is actually an industry out there that they even want to get into. Nice. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, you know, I don't know about his comment about smoke and mirrors because I wouldn't really know what they do yet. Uh, I don't even know where in the marketplace they want to be yet. Yeah. Um, well, I, th I, know, think, I think, I think the market is, Jace? yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Market's so dynamic now we'll just have to wait and say, well, listen, Big Poppy, Little Poppy, how do people get hold of you guys? Website? Sure. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm asking the wrong guy. <laughs> No, we don't want it. We don't want, don't give them the mailing address. Yeah. Uh, how do you, what's your website? Uh, HeptaSystems Hepta or HeptaControls.com. Uh, and they can also follow us on Twitter, 
Jason underscore HDS. There you go. All right, Big Poppy, Little Poppy. We're talking to Hep Hepta, Radio Automation Controls, winners at the Niagara Summit. You guys come to Control Terms Awards. Maybe you won an award there, too. 